All right. Well, we welcome uh, Nick uh, Venortas, if I've got the pronunciation uh, correct. Uh, is, Very correct. Uh, <laughs> our local expert and uh, st distinguished uh, academician in the area of uh, careers and technology. Nick uh, is a professor of economics and international affairs at GW, and he's the director of the ISTP and uh, MA programs in international science and tech, tech policy. He's got a, an amazing career, which spans, I, I, let me know if I've missed anything, but Brazil, China, Russia, U.S., uh, Korea, U.K., as the, all those in there. <laughs> Did I miss anything? I am very poor, okay? That doesn't mean <laughs> that I have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, so because we are talking about careers here. That's yes, <laughs> that's right. Lots to offer. But uh, <laughs> All right. And let's dive in. You know, I, what we hope uh, we could talk about today is really um, some foundational information about uh, current uh, sort of careers in technology, what students should be thinking about. Um, if you yeah. want to uh, just um, give us, you know, 10, yeah. 15 minutes of openers around that, then we'll be able to uh, continue with uh, the conversation. So, so, so this is a classic question for our program because uh, people understand science they understand technology. Um, maybe sometimes they understand innovation, not always, but uh, sometimes they understand the word innovation, um, uh, but they don't understand the combination of these with policy. So what, what science policy means, what technology policy means, what innovation policy means, and, and, and how uh, does it help me to get a job? I mean, who wants such a person? Is, 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 the, is the typical question. Uh, I'm not going to be a chemist and I'm not going to be a physicist and I'm not going to be a mathematician. So who wants a person who, who, who deals with policy about these things? And, and um, I think uh, throughout the years, we, we, we have had a, a, a good argument um, that many people actually are looking for such experts because um, whether you, it is government which uh, uh, funds uh, science and technology or it is the private sector which also funds and uh, science technology and innovation very much for the private sector um, um, uh, or it is uh, think tanks uh, or think tanks, you know, uh, who advise, uh, usually they have an advisory role um, uh, for um, the public sector primarily, but also some of them, the private sector as well. Uh, plus, uh, and I include in the private sector also consulting companies. Right. Uh, all the yep. big consultancies will have um, positions for uh, people either in s and policy or s and management. Um, the companies will call it more management strategy. Um, but the strategy is not very far from policy. Uh, simply strategy is the policy of the private sector and policy, the word policy usually is reserved for the public sector. But essentially they are talking about similar things. How do we organize ourselves to do a good job? Um, for example, today we have an issue with China on 5G. So how do we make sure that, 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 that down the road pretty soon we actually meet the demand uh, with 5G? What do we fund? What capabilities we need? Uh, do we go the private sector way or the public sector way or both? Um, who are the best people to advise us on this? Um, what information is out there, you know, for us to understand? I mean, how do we understand the scientists to believe to begin with? Uh, usually, there will be a major problem in understand for from 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 the policy decision makers to understand what the science uh, scientists are saying and the other way around the scientists do not understand what are the concerns of the policy decision makers right and are both ways there is uh, problematic so so this is what our program does um, our program you can think of a, a something like a translation uh, so we bring communities together to discuss 
And we actually um, use expertise from both sides, uh, from the doers who are the scientists and the technologists uh, and the users who are the organizations actually that need these innovations. Um, um, uh, and, 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 and this is a very valuable function. I don't know if you saw the, the, the president-elects um, uh, talk the other, the other two evenings ago. Yeah. Uh, he mentioned science several times. Um, so um, the very first example is the pandemic. Of course, everybody keeps talking about the pandemic. And what do we talk about? The pandemic? What are we waiting for? The vaccine. Mm -hmm. So vaccines do not rain from the rain from the sky, right? Vaccines are expensive things. They take time. They take communities. They take they take a lot of effort. Um, and, and, and just the, the fact that, that we can speed up the process today from what used, used to be the shortest one until now was four years, the shortest, and the longest several decades <laughs> to, to a year or a year and a half is a major accomplishment. Right. Right. Um, so, so, so the program uh, is about advice to those who make decisions that relate to science, technology, and innovation. And, and our graduates can get jobs in the public sector. And in the public sector, I also I do not only talk about the federal government, but I talk about state governments and local governments. Northern Virginia, for example, just across the river from GW is, uh, has developed a very nice cluster on information technology. Um, this did not happen accidentally. Uh, this took effort, it took money, it took people. I right. uh, mean, the one, the uh, what's happening in Crystal City and the movement with VT and the sort of set clustering technology. Every, and, yeah. Yeah. Every time you get in your car on, on the on the subway and you go to Dallas Airport, um, uh, what you see is actually now only a row of trees on the left and on the right. Everything beyond the first row of trees is big buildings. And these are this is a big cluster of IT. One of the right, right. Right. And if you go the I-270, if you travel the north um, in Maryland, the I-270 towards Germantown, right? Um, that's another cluster, um, which is the fourth biggest biotechnology cluster in the country. Well, I didn't realize um, that. Yes, um, and that also is new, and that also took money and expertise and time to develop. Yeah. Uh, so this is what our graduates do. And these days, um, I think there is a um, very significant demand. Um, I want to say, because most people in the careers uh, group may not know this, um, uh, the, 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 as you know, recruitment is a little bit of a problem these days for, uh, for, for all schools, not just uh, ours or uh, GW or everybody is uh, suffering a little bit because of the situation. Um, we have had our best year ever. That's great. Yeah. For, for, for what, what I'm saying, because everybody now is sensitized is suddenly that science is, is an important thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you mean on the, yeah, on the admission side or on the... Uh, see the discussion with China, right? In yeah. the School of International Affairs, we deal with China these days because the U.S. has some geopolitical issues with them. Uh, the vast majority of the of the topics in that discussion have to do with technology. What is it? Artificial intelligence? Is it computing? Is it vaccines? Is it diseases? Is it, what is it? Um, these are all uh, issues that we deal in our program. Uh, tonight, for example, uh, in half an hour, I have a class in our uh, our uh, cornerstone, and and we will be talking about space. So big yeah. issues, in, big issues in space, uh, huge issues. The whole industry is changing. Um, we go from primarily public sector 
um, oriented to primarily private sector oriented. So the big money now is with Mr. Musk um, <laughs> and SpaceX that you see in the newspapers. He has become a, a right. celebrity, right? Yeah. And, and, and Jeff Bezos with his own company. Right, yeah. Um, and, and, and a few other people like, like, like that. Uh, they spend a lot of money and, yeah. and they are very influential in the way this country uh, will develop in the near future this very important sector. Absolutely. Absolutely. I understand, I understand that, that Scott, Scott Pace, Pace may be Pace back uh, next yeah. semester too. So, yeah, that's exciting. So, listen, uh, um, one thing that always comes up, it, you know, as far as uh, science and technology policy is to, what would you recommend to students to what? extent do they need to know about the science and tech that they're working on policy about you know what i mean that uh because a lot of people think i'm not a tech specialist i'm not a science specialist to what to what degree of uh language do i need to have in order to be that kind of bridge that you talk about jim the ironic the ironic uh, uh answer to this is actually almost nothing Hmm. Um, uh, social scientists are at least as good as uh, uh, natural scientists in this and in fact the social scientists have an advantage and the advantage is that they are used to deal with a lot of stuff, a lot of material that quickly they need to, to, to understand and decide what is important, what is less important. Whereas the natural scientists, if you are an engineer, if you are a physicist, a chemist, you, you read very differently. You read things in depth. Um, in our field, we read horizontally. Um, and social scientists have, uh, have an advantage in this. In fact, I was talking the other day to somebody and I was saying, if I have to think about the top five people from our program, the last three decades, two of them, I would place two of them uh, coming in uh, with a, f a philosophy background. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. That's something, you know, I just, I just read this book um, called Human Work in the Age of Smart Machines. And uh -huh. uh, this uh, guy, Jamie Marisotis, and he uh, was talking about the key skill for the future is wide learning, which I think is sort of like reading horizontally, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, so one of these people, for example, uh, has a very good position, is one of our most uh, important alumni and a good friend of the program. Um, he, after leaving the program, uh, went to NYU. He is from New York. Uh, he did his PhD and now he has a major position at the Sloan Foundation and he just released actually an excellent book on philanthropy. Uh, in science and technology, um, um, because the United States is, is has a huge philanthropic foundations, right, with a lot of money, like the Bill Gates Foundation, for yes. example. Right. For example. <laughs> and the uh, Google, yeah, for example, just a little uh, entity. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's an expert on this. Uh, actually, he is one of the best um in the country on this on this particular topic oh fantastic what's his <clears throat> name or the... um his what? name is uh, evan mickelson evan mickelson oh, okay yeah. yeah great well i have some more questions but let me open it up first uh, just to see if any of uh, our group have any questions for you please yeah I know Catherine is, uh, Catherine's a senior. She's from California. She's got the California flag there. I know you, <laughs> you actually Very had some. proud of the California flag. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know you had some, you, a couple of questions just about the program itself. I don't know if that, if that fits in here or not, but yeah. Sure, Catherine, go ahead. Yeah, so I just love to um, learn about the program more generally. I don't know if that is um, better for a later point in this discussion, um, but I am very interested in the development of cyber policy um, and specifically um, Russia and China's attempts to um, develop the Budapest Convention. Um, and so I was just wondering if you could um, maybe speak. I see that um, 
cyber is one of the elements within the national security concentration um, within the program. Um, so any developments within that um, as like you, I'm very focused on um, cyber yeah. policy. Um, so is there like a way to specifically um, implement those um, classes within national security, um, the concentration that is? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, very good question. Um, uh, GW, because of its location, um, has also other programs that are very complementary to ours on this particular topic. One of those programs is in the School of Engineering, and we collaborate very closely with them. And in fact, one of our applicants this, this, this year got a major um, study award by them, um, and, and he's studying very closely. Um, um, also, the security policy program of the Elliott School, obviously, is very much interested in this. So, so if you join the program, definitely you will take some of their courses uh, to, for your minor. Um, uh, for us, as far as our program is concerned, you will be in the group that deals with information technology. This, this falls into this. And if I send you, for example, if I have your email and send you the, the syllabus of the class that I teach tonight, uh, which is the corner. So this is the first class you will take in our program to open the field. You will see that this particular field is the only thematic field that has two weeks, two lectures devoted to it rather than one. Everything else, big items like space, for example, will have only one lecture. And, and energy in the environment, huge subject, right? Only one lecture. Uh, but uh, IT has two um, uh, because it's extremely important uh, for our field today. It's uh, what uh, my fellow economists would call a general purpose technology, a GPT, um, um, which means a, a technology that really is distributed across our society. So every other sector, uh, the importance of IT is that every other sector actually is part of it. Uh, we are talking about cybersecurity, for example, now because of the elections um, in, in, in these areas, but cybersecurity is distributed everywhere, right? One of the major problems, for example, potential problems uh, with our adversaries is that they will take down our electricity grid. That's cybersecurity for you that most yep. people do not understand, <laughs> right? Just imagine you being without your cell phone for even for one day. Mm. Now people <laughs> will commit suicide. <laughs> 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 and, and more important things than that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so to, 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 to finish with uh, Catherine, Catherine's uh, question, uh, it is a very important uh, item in our field, Catherine. Great. Thank you very much. Um, another question for you is uh, I wanted to circle back, you know, and th thinking about careers in technology, we we're talking about the vaccine and the science connection, but as far as the effect of COVID on um, changes that are occurring in science and technology policy, uh, what do you think the impact has been and how should that affect yeah. the way people think of careers in um, yeah. science and tech policy? It has positive and negative effects, we think. Um, of course, nobody knows, right? These are educated guesses, I guess. That's, that's how you... Um, the positives are that there is a, uh, everybody showering the area with money. So um, those people who are in, that, in those fields are happy. And, and, and happiness in that field means that we all live better lives, healthier lives. Uh, so the money will not stay just in COVID. Uh, but COVID is just, just uh, the, the, the beginning of more expenditure in that area. The bad, the bad one may be that uh, uh, a lot of young people may be drawn by the research money, increased research money in that area. And, and, and if we cannot sustain it um, in the future, um, we will face uh, serious issues. Uh, and I give you the, an, a, 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 a real example. So when the previous administration of President Obama came in town, 
in 2009, they, they created this huge program that distributed hundreds of billions of dollars, right? Seven, eight hundred billion dollars to get the economy moving. Uh, one of the areas where they spent lavishly was science and particular, uh, particularly health. Um, uh, that drew actually, of course, the existence of money drew people um, and unfortunately that expenditure was not sustained um, uh, and, and I hear, not only I hear, but I know that there is um, a, a good numbers of people at the postdoctoral level uh, and such a highly qualified people who do not have big chances to be absorbed by universities and, and so what we thought at the beginning, right? So you may have such phenomena, misallocation of resources when you have, when, when you have such sudden infusion of money. Uh, usually the, the increases or decreases are gradual uh, in, in science, but when you have such incidents or very su suddenly you know, we spend we spend as much as we can on on, on something. Um, then you may have um, also negative effects, not only positive. So, and under the, yeah. So the other negative effect that this might have is that we may drain resources from other important areas to to throw to to this uh, to health. Um, and, and in our field, one lesson that we learn is that all sciences are important. You, it's very hard for us in advance without knowing the future uh, to, to isolate uh, uh, science and say, ah, this is useful because uh, industry wants it, whereas the other one is not useful because it's, um, it's um, you know, very, not, 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 not immediately applicable. Uh, and uh, usually these things, uh, these things lead to miscalculations. Wow, that's interesting. I hadn't really thought of that, that especially, you know, if they were, if all goes uh, as we think it will with Biden, that, uh, that, you know, there's more of an emphasis on science, but that's a double-edged sword because uh, it might lead to expenditures, over-expenditures. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. yes, very easily. It has led already. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of money. What I was saying, the the operation warp speed um, right. that, that um, tries for the, it has attracted a lot of resources very suddenly. Um, there will be vaccines, but then, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's always consequences. Every decision has uh, consequences also. Right, right, yeah. So, <clears throat> I had a quick question. So um, I'm one of the career coaches with uh, with GSS, and I know that a question that we always get from students is, how do they make themselves desirable in this field? Like, what can they be doing while they're in school? What skills can they be building? What internships should be look should they be looking for? Um, so I guess obviously there are, I'm sure are a lot of different pathways that you can take. But if you had to identify some key skills or key things that students can be doing now yeah. to make themselves competitive when they graduate. Uh, when, when students uh, ask for public jobs uh, and they want to know where do I look and which direction do I go, uh, the easiest way to, uh, the first rule of thumb is in the first class that they take, the cornerstone, to, to pay attention to which are the agencies, the government agencies that spend a lot of money. Uh, when they have this list, we will give it to them anyway. They, we will study this. So they know who are the likely employers. These are, these are the places where they usually find jobs um, in the government. Um, uh, uh, but uh, the skills uh, that they need to have um, are um, <clears throat> very much communication, um, how to communicate their ideas succinctly and, and quickly is, is very important. I personally prefer that they have a robust uh, uh, background. There are certain key concepts that they need to have from economics and business. Now, I am biased, of course, but believe me, it's not just my bias. When you look at the way people get employed, 
um, um, you will see that those who have one or two or three courses on their transcript electives that remind of, of economics or of business, they are more employable. Um, it's a signal. It's a signal to people that, uh, that this person, you know, understands what an externality is because in our field, uh, this word is very common. And yet for the average person out there, externality, I mean, what is an externality? Um, well, an externality is every time that you buy your car, you, you step on the gas of your car, um, you leave something behind and, and that is bad for the rest of us. That's a negative external effect. And every time you, you educate a person, um, this person may have paid for the education um, and they thought only about themselves when they were paying about the education. And yet the, the mere fact that they are educated benefits society uh, at large. Um, that's a positive externality. Every time that a company spends money on research, it doesn't only benefit itself, that's, that's the, the objective, it benefits the others who sooner or later will, will get that knowledge, right? Um, so so, so, so uh, I think in our field, uh, I advise people to have some, some actually background of, of concepts that are not common sense out there. Um, when you talk to the congressman and you say that there are certain activities, certain areas where you may see the market operating, health. Uh, in Health is not a public good. Many people say, uh, think that health is a public good. No, it's not a public good. Uh, in fact, the market operates in health. There are private hospitals, there are doctors, there are, we pay. Uh, we have insurances, there is a huge market in health. The, the question, however, for the policy decision maker is not just that. The policy decision maker cannot just look at the fact that there is private hospitals and say, ah, let the private sector operate. No, the, 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 the decision is whether the private sector um, um, provides the service to the socially optimal level. Mm. Now that's different. Mm. Um, that's different from just saying there is private sector out there. Um, so, so there are, there are many, many things um, where the market does not fail totally. These are not public goods like defense. In national defense, the market fails totally. There will be no private sector ever <laughs> uh, <laughs> providing national defense. There will be many companies that are paid by the government to produce the bad stuff, the guns and, and the bombs and you know the biological agents. Um, but they will not provide, they cannot provide national defense. So that is a public good. But uh, health and education are not public goods. They're goods with a lot of external effects. And thus, what the private sector provides is not really at the level that, that the analyst will call socially optimal. And the government then needs to intervene to, with various policies to try to bring it up to where uh, society, the level that society would like subsidies, uh, funding of research. Um, um, and to give you an example, right? We are talking about all of us have health in our minds, COVID. Uh, so have you thought about the amazing subsidies that, that our pharmaceutical sector is, is benefiting from? NIH itself, the whole NIH in Bethesda is just a big subsidy to that sector. That's all it is, NIH. Is. It's uh, a big subsidy. Uh, interesting. Thirty-five yeah. billion dollars per year. Thirty-five billion dollars, and all they do is to support the basic research, the academic style of research that will support that industry. And then, this industry takes this. They create medicines, a few medicines, not that many um, medicines, and then we come on the back and we subsidize them yet again, um, whatever they want. 
any price they want, we will pay. Uh, right? Um, it's it's a, it's it's an amazing amount of money that goes from the public sector and the taxpayer to that particular industry. Right? But in order to engage in these discussions and in order to to to, to sort of um, advise decision makers on these things, you need to have a little background. You need to, you know, somebody needs to lead you into this uh, first. Uh, um, so, so this is this is the kinds of things that 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 we do here. We do in our program. Right? That's right. Yeah. Um, Great. Uh, yeah, we have a few more minutes. Ten yeah. More minutes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any any questions uh, from others? I have a couple. My question for you is just um, yeah, probably this is more a question for the beginning because we're. we're focusing in but how did you end up in this field and um if you, <laughs> and if you were Catherine or another student who's just at the cusp of a new career what's one piece of advice that you would have yeah um <clears throat> another thing that i wanted actually to add before with meg is uh uh internships oh, yeah. uh, and, and sort of um, relationships with prospective employers is an absolute must. Um, um, many people graduate from universities these days with good degrees. And if that is all you've got, um, you have an, a problem. Um, a, a, a good job is, is, is usually um, prepared. You, <laughs> you, 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 you create a good job for yourself by, by sort of uh, enriching your studies with, with exposure with, uh, with the real world. So all of us, um, all of our students actually uh, work either part-time or full-time. Many, many of our students work full time. And what is a better, a better place to work in policy than in the middle of Washington? I mean, you can, one can, can hardly think of any other place that, that, that is uh, equally good to Washington. Maybe Beijing for <laughs> China, maybe <laughs> Brussels for Europe. I don't know, Tokyo, maybe, but I don't think so. I think Washington is uh, tops the list. That's a great town. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and one, one thing that's occurring to me, too, is that uh, in science and technology policy professionals are actually not necessarily introverts. You know, you often talk about the quiet professions like, you know, scientists and those, but we're actually yeah. talking about a different slice of demographics of people who are actually bridges of communicators who like bridge science and government and be able, are able to talk to other people, build relationships and all, and all that kind of thing. Would uh, you say, yeah. Absolutely correct, Jim. Uh, uh, and I think I mentioned once communications, a way uh, being able to communicate with people is key. Um, is yeah. key because you, one does not have a lot of time to express oneself. Uh, uh, you need to be a little bit precise to know what you want to say um, rather than expecting the others to listen to you for 10 minutes until they, they understand the question. You, know? I mean, you need to be... Uh, so communications, I would, I would strongly recommend this. Um, communications. Yeah. Uh, networking, networking. It's 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 amazing to uh, an amazing help. I had help in my career this way um, when I was a student, actually in New York, because I also studied in New York. Um, um, I had um, I worked for a research institute, and this this the director of that institute was extremely well connected internationally, and, in the, and that really helped me. Very, very much. So, ah, so ah, there you an answering the question of how you fell into this field, but it sounds like you uh, dove in and then you networked and you did the study in NYU, uh, right? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, uh, uh, some people uh, ask me, uh, okay, I'm a good student. I, I wrote a good exam uh, um, um, and I wrote a good paper and I should get a job. I tell them, you know, 
uh, uh, all right, I will write a very a good recommendation letter for you, but you know, I will not pick up the phone for you. <laughs> right. And, uh, and there are other people for whom I will pick up the phone and I will call my friend uh, because I am sure if they didn't just write a paper for me, they didn't just write an exam, but I know that they know. So I'm not afraid to, to actually guarantee for them. I will, I will not call my friends for anyone, for everybody. I will call my friends for somebody that I really know is a good person, you know? Um, yes. Uh, that's and it. that's why I tell them, create networks, be close, you know, talk to us, keep talking to us, be, be around. I want to see that you are interested. So even in the classroom or with uh, student gatherings and getting to know each other. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a, such a challenge now with COVID. You know, I think a lot of people feel very uh, isolated, but uh, I think what you're saying is absolutely right. You know, all of our students, you know, how to engage, how to get to know people, how to build some, and building trust online is a, is a, a little bit of a challenge, but it uh, sounds like super important. Let's hope that science will, will, will save us. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think we're headed in that direction. <laughs> Soon. Yes. They better hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> I hear. I hear that uh, Pfizer's uh, vaccine is doing well. Ninety percent, they say, right? Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Yeah. The news are that that one is going well. So mm, there is hope. Yeah. The market was up. Uh, 1600 i don't know yeah amazing uh, so we'll see yeah. I, we need more good news i think yeah catherine Catherine. hi um yeah so i just want to thank you for that information it was super insightful uh so i see on the website that there is information on where the graduates um of the program um end up um but i was hoping i could get a little examples. bit more country examples these are examples okay what came okay. to our mind Okay. <laughs> and we also have the graduate student employment report, which is on the GSS site. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Um, uh -huh. So um, I was just hoping to get a bit um, of a clear understanding of where the, you said most are currently employed. Um, I was hoping I could get a little bit more information if you knew where they um, are currently mm -hmm. employed. I am currently interning with um, the State Department and I would like to eventually <laughs> return there. Um, so I was just hoping if you could like provide a little bit more information on where the graduates currently mm -hmm. work as well as um, if you have more insight on um, if many of the graduates end up at um, Department of State. And also, I know that you have to run to your class soon, but um, if you could um, clear up any information about contracting um, for the public sector, that would be super helpful. So um, the Department of State is, uh, is um, obviously across the, the institute there. <laughs> Uh, and it's a, a, a good customer. Um, many, pe several people have gone to the Department of State, particularly in the, the Office of the Science Advisor, right? Um, um, in this current administration, that office, like the Office of the White House also on, on science technology, uh, has not been super active. Um, but it's the nature of this administration and, and it will change. Uh, 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 so uh, I would strongly recommend that that office, the, the science advisor to the, uh, you know, to the secretary is, uh, is, is, is the right one. But uh, the State Department has many other, uh, other places and, and lucky, uh, it's good luck for, uh, for our students that um, our institute has a, a program, has had a program for decades now. Actually, I found the program when I arrived in, at the Elliott School. It was already there. It was established by the first, the founding dean of the Elliott School with the State Department. And every year we take a, 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 a State Department officer and foreign officer to sit in our institute for one year. Um, so the State Department, it's something like a sabbatical leave for them. They leave for a year, they're getting paid by, by they're getting their salaries and GW is offering them a program of studies in science and technology policy. 
Uh, so they sit with us uh, and they are supposed to be the liaison between the Department of State and, and, our, and our students. So I would strongly recommend that this is the person you want to talk to. They know the department very, very well. Um, and they know what kinds of placements you guys, if you end up there, uh, what kinds of placements around the world. But you can imagine, right? There, you can imagine that um, all the countries uh, 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 that, that have significant science and technology efforts um, are starting from East Asia, right? And China and Korea and, 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 and Japan, to name a few, and basically everybody else over there. Uh, but uh, also in Europe uh, and some countries in Latin America, uh, Australia, New Zealand, all of these embassies will have attaches that, that deal with science technology because, because that's the, the, the sort of the ears, the eyes and the ears of, of the State Department of what's going on in that country. Um, <clears throat> Now, um, uh, contracting, um, I don't know exactly what kind of contracting you, you, you mean, do you mean contracts for us uh, that we do for them? Uh, what kind of contracting you have in mind? Um, so in my bureau right now, there are just um, several contractors um, through um, different organizations, I'm not particularly sure, um, that um, are working um through multilateral organizations but um there is the difference between um true employees so to speak of department of state and the contractors of who can like sit behind the flag and um different um, things that they're able to do there, uh, uh, <laughs> this is the beltway the, the washington <laughs> beltway and inside the washington beltway <laughs> Yeah. There is thousands of those yeah. <laughs> of those organizations that that uh, deal, depending on what you 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 want to you have in mind, but I think uh, uh, particularly in science and technology, I mean there is there is a uh, basically every industry uh, will have a big association in Washington. All industries are represented in Washington. So, so for, for example, from California, some of the biggest uh, associations are for high tech, right? The IT industry is all in, 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 in they are represented in Washington. Um, so, so the private sector is here, is, is in Washington very much, their representatives. And, and, and what do they do? Um, not only they lobby the government in a good sense of the word lobbying, um, uh, but also they, they are looking for contracts, right? From defense and everywhere else. <laughs> yes. Know. Yeah. So. Absolutely. And Washington, that's a, is not, is, uh, Washington knows contracts. <laughs> that's right. That's a smart way to see the full spectrum of employment opportunities. So, well, yeah. Nick, it's been great. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, on behalf of all of us and the recording too, and the students will see that, really uh, appreciate it. And I know you're off to an inspiring topic of space. So I wish you luck with that. And, uh, space, space, yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the title of the talk is Space semicolon war and peace oh wow that mm -hmm. says it all yeah <laughs> because, because it, it's important for both <laughs> right <laughs> did, you see, did you see the news that um that um uh, nasa sent the probe that uh, sat on an asteroid and and took some specimens out and oh oh in the yeah yeah somewhere uh, in there was, yeah in the, in do you there. know that this is this is not totally legal Oh, is that there right? Is, there is no legal uh, foundation for such activities. The, the, we have one treaty um, for space. It's from the mid '60s, and it says that space belongs to everybody. Um, wow, so you cannot a... uh, uh, you cannot go mine uh, something just because you thought about it. <laughs> right? How's that? So... Need... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure that these issues will be coming up more and more as we uh, move forward. Absolutely. So. Uh... Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Thank Great. You very, Thanks very so much. much. Really appreciate uh, it. All right. Catherine, take, nice meeting you. So much. Okay. Take care. Bye bye.